Living among the medical community as I did for weeks was a huge revelation to me. I'd never been hospitalized before. I had never seen the extraordinary daily kindness and heroism of nurses up close. I had never depended on them. For weeks, I was completely dependent on them. I had only one real day and night of pain in the hospital after surgery, and it was a giant order of magnitude, the worst pain I have ever experienced. It is actually an ordeal that many post-surgical patients go through, and I cannot get into the details now because it is just too gross. Trust me, I'm not kidding about that. And if you've been through it, you know what I'm talking about. A nurse named John Frank Ellis got me through that night. It was, in its way, as hard a night for John as it was for me. I've never been more dependent on anyone in my adulthood and never been more grateful. The next night when John came back on duty, I gave him a thank you note in a sealed envelope with some cash in it, a lot of cash in it, a token of my indescribable gratitude. John took the envelope, the sealed envelope, he left the room, and a few minutes later he came back in and he said, my thanks was all that mattered to him. And he handed me back the money. And he told me that it was against his personal ethics and against hospital policy to accept gifts like that. I had no idea. I had no idea I'd crossed the line. This was all new to me. So you can, you can tip people who clean your room in, hosp in, in hotels, but you can't tip nurses. I didn't know that. Great nurses don't do it for the money. Yes, they care about and they rely on their paychecks, but they couldn't do the work they do. The great nurses couldn't do that. They couldn't do it the way they do it if the motivation didn't come from the goodness of their hearts. You wouldn't recognize John as a hero if you saw him going to or from work on the subway with his backpack, and John doesn't ask to be treated like a hero. None of the nurses I met want that. They want to make a living that allows them to support their families, and they want to help people in the process, people they don't even know, including people who will forget them. The doctors and nurses I have met have something that most of the rest of us don't have, the absolute certainty every time they go to work that they're going to do something important today, something invaluable for someone else. All the physical therapists who've been helping me learn to walk again have that same quiet kindness, that same dedication. When you watch us on TV getting all caught up in the news of the day, which often means the bad news of the day, it's worth trying to remember that an awful lot went right in this country today. Yes, we have a dysfunctional Congress, but not far down the street from them. We have people working in hospitals doing remarkable things to save lives every day. When's the last time you saved a life? I've never done that either. If you saved a life, a baby, a mother, a grandfather, don't you think you would feel that was more newsworthy than what some angry, ineffectual politician <laughs> said in Washington today? I'm not sure there's anything we in the news business can do about that, but you can. You can listen to what we think the news of the day is, but never lose sight of the fact that more good things happened in America and the world today than we can possibly report to you or that we know how to report to you. Don't ever lose that perspective. The nurse who spent the most time with me in New York is Shannon Lawrence. Our shared name was less interesting to me than her first name, Shannon. As an Irish American kid growing up in a place like Boston, I developed an ear for the ethnicity in every name. On our first day together, I asked Shannon how she got an Irish first name. She said her father was wounded in World War II and was sent to a hospital in England for treatment. The nurses there literally did not want to touch the black soldiers in that hospital. Then an Irish nurse came along and took good care of Shannon's father. The Irish nurse's name was Shannon. It would be a beautiful story, even if Shannon didn't grow up to become a nurse, but she did, and so it's a perfect story. My nurse, Shannon, has spent her life sharing the same healing kindness and grace that her father's nurse did. 
And on my last day in New York, I told Shannon that if I had another daughter, I would name her Shannon. Shannon. 